Yes, you read the video title right. And you can also make your own paradigm of the study or research paradigm in less than five minutes. Hey there loves, welcome back to my channel. If you've just hopped into this video, welcome. I am Jean Castillo de Jesus, a public school teacher handling English and research subjects. And if you are interested to learn more about these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In my last video, we tackled the conceptual framework in which I discussed that it is the textual representation of the paradigm of the study. So today, we will start the discussion on how to make the research paradigm or paradigm of the study. There are different models of research paradigm and I will discuss each one of them. But in this video, I will only tackle one which is the independent and dependent variable model or the IVDV model. Let us not prolong this anymore. I hope you have already your pen and your research notebook so you can jot down the significant points and you can also make your own paradigm of the study together with me. What are the vital points in our research that we need in order for us to make the research paradigm? First, we need the research title. Because by just merely reading the research title, we will be able to identify its research design with the help of signal words. Now, if you are not yet familiar on the signal words and the appropriate research design that you will utilize for the research title that you have formulated or that you are planning to conduct, watch the video lesson that I have made on crafting the research title. I will link the video on the description box or I'll just put it on my card here. So going back, we need your research title. Then, once we are able to identify the research title, we can formulate the research questions. After the research questions, you can now make your own paradigm of the study. In this discussion, I will utilize the research title of my students in Inquiries, Investigation, and Immersion, in which they survived the final defense with flying colors. So I asked their permission if I could use them in my video lesson. And I'm very thankful that they agreed. So here it goes. Their research title is Attitudes and Performance on Capstone Project of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics graduates. Looking at this research title, we can immediately identify its research design, which is the descriptive correlational. Because of the use of the signal word and... In this research title, the independent variable is attitudes and the dependent variable is the performance on capstone project. By the way, if you can hear someone screaming at my background, that's my seven-month-old baby who's waiting for me to finish filming so we can wind down for our night routine. I hope that you bear with me. Going back, the independent variable in this research title is attitudes and the dependent variable is performance on capstone project. So who will be our respondents? The science, technology, engineering, and mathematics graduates because they have already finished their capstone project. So during the conduct of this study, the grade 12 STEM students haven't finished conducting yet so they were not chosen as the respondents because they could not provide the data needed to accomplish this research. Maybe you are still confused as to the difference between independent variable and dependent variable. So in simple terms, independent variables are probably those that cause, influence, or affect 
the dependent variables. They may influence the outcome of the research work. On the other hand, dependent variables are those that receive the influence of the independent variable. They are the outcomes of the influence of the independent variables. Now that we have already identified the independent variables and dependent variables, as well as the research design, by just reading the research title, we can immediately proceed to formulating the research questions. Again, the research design for this research title is Descriptive Correlational Research. Of course, because this follows a quantitative research design, the first research question would reflect or would determine the profile of the respondents. So here is the first research question. What is the profile of the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics graduates in terms of? Since we have the variable profile as reflected in the first research question, we need as well to formulate or to think of the sub-variables. But be careful in choosing or including the sub-variables in your study because you have to ensure that they are relevant to your core concern. So, we have 1.1 sex, 1.2 family monthly income, 1.3 learning resources available, 1.4 parents educational background, 1.5 the general average. So I only chose these five sub-variables because according to the preliminary investigation conducted, these five sub-variables may have a significant relationship on the attitudes and performance on capstone project of STEM graduates. As you can observe, I also did not include the sub-variable age because again, based on the preliminary investigation conducted, the age group or the age bracket of the STEM graduates are similar. Moving forward to the research question number two, what is the attitudes of the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics graduates on capstone project? When we say attitude, it refers to the beliefs, feelings, or thoughts of the sources of data or in short, of the respondents and the counterpart of attitude is behavior when we use the variable behavior in research it refers to the action of the individuals or the sources of data or your respondents so in the case of this research we focus on attitude as the variable perhaps you also want to know how we quantified attitudes since it is an example of a qualitative variable we quantified attitude with the use of the five point likert scale of quality in which five is excellent four good three satisfactory two fairly satisfactory and one Poor. Let us now have the third research question. What is the performance on capstone project of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics graduates? Since we use the variable performance, we will quantify it through the grades that they have received last academic year on the subject capstone. So how were my students able to ask for the grade? Of course, one option is including it in the survey questionnaire, but perhaps in some cases, some respondents may forget their actual or correct grade in a specific subject area. So the second thing that you must do is to write a letter addressed to the BCIS coordinator. Of course, it should be approved by your school head asking for this administrative data. Yes, the grade is an example of an administrative data 
and it will be given to you provided that you followed the research protocol. And always remember the right to confidentiality. We researchers have the responsibility not to divulge any raw data. And now for our cues 4, 5, and 6, we will ask questions to ascertain the significant relationship between the independent variables and dependent variables. So for RQ4, we will correlate the variables in RQ1 and RQ2. So is there a significant relationship between the profile of the STEM graduates and their attitudes towards capstone project? For research question number five, we will correlate the variable in RQ1 and RQ3. So here it goes. Is there a significant relationship between the profile of the STEM graduates and their performance on capstone project? And lastly, we will correlate the attitudes and performance reflected in RQ2 and RQ3. Is there a significant relationship between the attitude of STEM graduates and their performance on capstone project? Now that we have already formulated the research questions, crafting your paradigm of the study will be easy peasy. Yes, trust me, researchers, it's going to be easy. Madali lang siyang gawin as long as you know your research design and you have already formulated the research questions. Since this is a descriptive correlational research, we will use the IVDV model or the independent variable dependent variable model. This is one of the types of the paradigm of the study or research paradigm. And for the other research paradigm models, I will discuss them in the upcoming videos. In making the paradigm of the study, you only need two. First is the graph or a rectangle and line. Yes, you will place the independent variables here on the left. Meanwhile, the dependent variables should be in the right side of the paper or of the document. So you just need figures. Here you place one rectangle or one figure which will represent the profile of the STEM graduates. And again, you have to itemize the sub-variable, but you will not write any more 1.1, 1.2, only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. Below the figure for the profile, you will place another figure which will represent or signify the attitudes of the STEM graduates on Capstone Project. And here on the other side, a rectangle, but in a different format, um, it's vertical, pahaba siya, so that the size of the figures in the independent variable would be parallel to the uh, size of the figure on the dependent variable. In this side, this figure will represent or signify the RQ number 3, which is the performance of the STEM graduates on Capstone Project. Are you learning so far, researchers? If yes, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of my uploads. To continue with our discussion, since we already have RQs 1, two and three represented in the IVDV model, we will now use the lines. So you will place a line connecting the profile to the attitude and then another line for the profile connected to the performance. And lastly, a line from attitude connected to the performance on capstone project so we already have our cues four five and six 
represented by these lines. Again, for the IVDV model, which can be used in descriptive correlational research, you will use line and not an arrow because if you will use an arrow it will be for another research design it will signify a different meaning it can be for cause and effect so your research paradigm or paradigm of the study is already done although in our learning institution the sixth subpart in chapter one is conceptual framework followed by the paradigm of the study Still, you cannot make the conceptual framework if you haven't finished the paradigm of the study. Just like what I said earlier, the conceptual framework serves as the blueprint of your research as well as the textual representation of the paradigm of the study. In short, you will explain the paradigm of the study in the conceptual framework. That ends today's lesson. I hope I have been of help to you, my dear researchers. Thank you so much for watching and please do love research. Till next time, bye!